In this lightboard session, you will learn about Azure API management and the networking options available. Azure API management, an Azure service that will help you to manage your API. Why do you need an API management? Well, let's start from the beginning. First of all, an enterprise would have some API. Those API would live on-prem, or maybe they are also on another cloud provider. They could be also on Azure. So in Azure, maybe you are using a solution like Azure uh, Functions or App Service, container apps, or maybe your API are created in an AKS cluster. Now you want to be able to securely expose and manage those API. In this case, you might rely on an API gateway with a gateway solution. And through that gateway, you can get access to those API and then you can expose those API to your end users. You can expose it through a public or a private IP and that will allow your users to be able to connect to that endpoint. So the gateway will provide you some nice features like handling the caching, throttling the requests. It will help you also to manage the security of your API. You will be able to do some transformation where you can expose a WSDL web service through a REST JSON app service, for example. And then that will allow you also to do mocking where you can define a mock that will return a sample HTTP request. So you expose this API to your users through the gateway, but now maybe you want to offer this API to some external or some third party developers so that they could integrate it within their own applications. And this way you can provide what you call a developer portal. The developer portal will be used then in order to discover the API or the web services, be able to test those web services to manage accounts. Because here, if you want to offer your API to third party developers, then you want to, to control how they use and they access your API. So maybe you'll be giving them API tokens, and then you want also to analyze the user. And again, for that developer portal, it could be, and it will be actually exposed through either a public or a private endpoint, and that it will be exposed to the developers. And now for the administrators to administer the gateway and the developer portal and the airbag roles, they will need another feature here, which is the management portal, or also call it the management plane. The management plane, again, will be exposed through a public or private IP address, and it is meant to be used by the administrator. All of these components and these features will be provided by the API management in Azure. That englobes the management plane, the developer portal, and the gateway. Let's learn about the networking options for an Azure API management. An Azure API management is typically used to expose your services or your endpoints through the gateway. And then you'll be able to allow your users to access those app services or those services through that gateway. And that gateway here, we are mentioning that it could be exposed through a public or a private IP address. Let's see those options and how you can configure them within an Azure API management. So when you create an API management, we'll ask you if you want to attach that API management to a virtual network or not. Let's start with the first option where here you go, I, or you choose to not attach it to a virtual network. With that option, that means that your API management will be exposed publicly to the internet through a public IP address. So this one here would have a public IP and it will also have a public FQDN that could be used by your, your end users to access directly the gateway. And then we have a second option, which is to attach the API management to a virtual network. This means that the API management will be injected into an Azure virtual network. So this means it would have a private IP address within the virtual network that could be reached from services that are deployed within that virtual network. And here, when we attach a virtual network or when we attach the app to a virtual network, we have actually two options. Either we choose the external, external mode, this means that with this mode, we would have the private IP, but we would also have a public IP address that exposes that API management. Our third option here would be an API management that is attached to a virtual network, but instead of using the external mode, it can use an internal mode. An internal mode means that we would have here our API management that will be attached to a virtual network, 
the APA management would have a private IP address within that uh, VNet, but it would have only a private IP address. It will not have that public IP. And in this way, this APA management could be used by the services deployed within the same virtual network or within a period virtual network. And still, if you want to expose publicly your endpoints or your API here, then you would be relying on services like the application gateway that could be injected into the same virtual network and then could reach that private IP. Or you can also rely on other services like Azure Front Door that could use the private link service in order to be able to be injected within the same virtual network and then reach that private IP. So those are the different options, either not attached to a virtual network, attached to a virtual network with the external mode or attach it and with internal mode. We still have actually a fourth option that is using a private endpoint. With a private endpoint, this means that you will still have your API management that is attached to a virtual network. And with this configuration, instead of having just a private IP address, your API management would have a private endpoint. That private endpoint is attached or is injected into the virtual network. So then to be able to expose those services privately, you just connect to the private endpoint. And if you want to expose them publicly, then you still can rely on the same services like here, the application gateway and the Azure front door. But here, of course, because you are using private endpoint, you will be adding a DNS zone to resolve the domain name of your uh, private endpoint to the FQDN of the API management. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.